We are trying to understand why do countries engage in foreign trade and what are the consequences of foreign trade. And in the previous lecture video, what we did is we looked at a very simple example of foreign trade where we examined one market and that is all. In this lecture video, what we'll do is we'll examine a market for two products at a time in a given country or what we are moving into is basic trade model from general equilibrium analysis perspective. Let us quickly examine the basic question and that is why do countries engage in foreign trade or why do countries export and import? Now one of the reasons is that some country may have resources to produce something and others may not. For example, if you're looking at crude oil, some countries have the resources of crude oil, whereas others countries may not. In such a case, it's very easy to explain foreign trade, and that is, if you own that particular resource, you are going to export it, and countries which do not have that resource are going to import it. So there the explanation is really simple, and we won't spend much time on this question. Look at the second one. <clears throat> we also know that there could be differences in autarky prices, and autarky simply refers to a situation of no trade. For example, some good may be produced at a higher price in one country and at a lower price in another country. Now, why do we have differences in autarky prices? That is what the theoretical trade models teach us, and that's what we look for as we go along look for explanation as to why we have differences in autarky prices. So differences in autarky prices become a basis for foreign trade and this is what we will look at. We will not look at the first case because there it's very easy to explain foreign trade. We will look at the second one and what we are trying to what we'll try to understand is why do we have differences in prices for the same product across country. Let us quickly go through the basic rules that we have learned when we worked our way through assumptions that we need in order to understand foreign trade. Now in this particular lecture video and subsequent lecture videos what we are looking at a country producing more than one good or we'll be looking at two goods at the same time and we know the first thing is that economic decisions are based on relative rather than absolute prices. Why is this? You can always refer to the relevant lecture video on this one. Another thing we know is the following. When you look at the behavior of consumers, consumers will buy more when relative price is lower and they will buy less when relative price is higher and this has to be compared to the producer's behavior or the business's behavior. Producers sell more when they receive a higher relative price and they will sell less when they receive a lower relative price. So this is how economic agents behave and when we have no foreign trade an economy produces all that it can consume. When we have foreign trade, there is a mismatch between domestic production and consumption. And when we have a mismatch between domestic production and consumption, that allows us to have foreign trade. For example, if you produce more of, say, clothing relative to what people buy in your country, in such a case, you are likely to export that product. And if consumption is greater than production, say for shoes, then you are likely to import shoes. The last thing you should remember as far as these basic rules go, the general basic rules, is what we are looking at is a price adjustment model. And that simply means that whenever we have any problem in the markets, whether they are domestic or international, 
as long as we have some kind of a disequilibrium in the market either demand is greater than supply or demand is less than supply in such a case relative prices will automatically adjust and they will go on adjusting till the markets are cleared whether domestically or internationally or in other words we have attained equilibrium so price in a way becomes the adjustment mechanism whenever we have disequilibrium in the marketplace now let me explain foreign trade when we are looking at two goods clothing and food uh, between india and the us or here we consider relative prices why because we are looking at more than one good two goods and let us assume that pc by pf in the us in autarky is lower than pc by pf in india in autarky or in other words relative price of clothing in the us in autarky is lower than relative price of clothing in india in autarky this statement also means that relatively speaking the price of food in the us in autarky must be greater than relative price of food in india in autarky so both these statements are correct now so there is a difference between pre trade or autarky prices between the us in india clothing is relatively cheaper in the us and food is relatively cheaper in india now given this suppose we find a world price such that this lies between these two extreme relative prices that is this world price lies between relative price of clothing in the us in autarky and relative price of clothing in india in autarky so this becomes a ground for foreign trade and let us assume that both countries accept the world prices and these two lie between those two extreme points now in the us what will happen is the world price of clothing in the world market is higher than what it was in the us in autarky and when relative price of clothing increases from the us perspective what will happen is producers of clothing will produce more why you should remember the basic rule producers produce more when relative prices of their product goes up and what will happen to producers of food when relative price of clothing goes up that means the relative price of food must have gone down so producers of food in the us will produce less what will consumers do in the us when relative price of clothing becomes higher due to international trade consumers of clothing in the us will buy less and consumers of food because relative price of food has fallen will buy more so producers of clothing are producing more and consumers of clothing in the us are buying less so what will happen us will have a surplus in production of clothing now whatever happens in the clothing sector in the us the exactly the opposite will happen with respect to food because relative price of food has fallen that means production of food in the us will go down but consumption of food will go up in the us or in other words in the us itself we will have a shortage of food now since the us has a surplus in production of clothing what will the us do with this surplus in production of clothing it will simply export that surplus that is not being bought in the us and since there is a shortage of food in the us what us will do is it will import food to reduce imbalances in clothing clothing and food 
markets. So this is what we would expect. And whatever we have considered for the US in a similar way, you can argue for what will happen in the case of India. Now, based on the previous slide, we know that if price of clothing relative to price of food in the US in autarky is lower than price of clothing relative to price of food in India in autarky, or generally speaking, relatively speaking, price of clothing is lower in the US relative to India in autarky and price of food in India is in autarky is lower than what we have for the US. In such a case, we know US will export clothing and import food. What will India do? It will do exactly the opposite. It will export food and import clothing. Now look at the following, how foreign trade impacts different sections of the society. Now, producers of clothing in the U.S. are going to be happy. Why? Because they receive a higher price for their product with foreign trade. What about producers of food in the U.S.? They cut back on their production. Why? Because the world price of food, relatively speaking, is lower. So producers of food in the U.S. are going to be unhappy. What about consumers? Consumers of clothing in the U.S. are going to be unhappy. Why? Because with foreign trade, they end up paying a higher price. What about consumers of food in the U.S.? They are going to be happy because they pay a lower relative price. So we know from the perspective of different sections of the society, some are going to be happy with foreign trade and some are not going to be happy with foreign trade. So this is a verbal explanation of foreign trade when we are looking at relative prices. And what we'll do in the subsequent videos is do it with the help of diagrams. And what we'll do is we'll first look at the constant cost industry. Once we are done with that, we'll look at the increasing cost industry. And the last one we'll work on is the decreasing cost industry. So we are going to focus on two good models. So we'll look at relative prices. And what we'll look at are different technologies available. One which gives us constant cost PPC. The second one gives us increasing cost PPC. And the third one gives us decreasing cost, friends. PPC. So thank you for your time.